Now we're going to work backwards. Find the equation of a polynomial of degree 4 with integer coefficients and a leading coefficient of 1. Anytime you read that part, you should over cheer. That had zero, that has zeros. x equals negative 2 minus 3i and x equals 1 with x equals 1 being a 0 of multiplicity 2. How do I do this? You should all be going, oh, this is just like what we did before with all those real numbers, but now we got non-real numbers. Start with writing out your four zeros, just like Gigi writes them out. X equals, X equals what? One, okay. And? X equals one, and? Negative two minus three i? That's only three. Negative two plus three i. Remember what I said about complex zeros. If you got one and your polynomial has real coefficients, in this case integer coefficients, then you got another one. So now we can make our parentheses thingies, or we can work our way there. What do I do next? x minus 1 equals 0, and <coughs> x minus 1 equals 0, and x plus 2 plus 3i equals 0, and x plus 2 minus 3i equals 0. And now I put them together. f of x <coughs> equals, here's where I usually put my leading coefficient. What is my leading coefficient? 1, so I don't need to put anything. So then I can start writing my x minus 1 times x minus 1 times x plus 2 plus 3i times x plus 2 minus 3i. Now, unfortunately, we've got, I don't know about you guys, but I get spoiled at this point in web work because it hasn't made me multiply any of these things out, and I never really wanted to in the first place. But when it gets here, you have to do some multiplying. Web work can deal with x minus 1 and x minus 1. It cannot deal with x and complex numbers. So these two we have to multiply together so that the only thing we're putting in there are nice, real numbers with the coefficients and the constant terms. So these two I can leave as is. Is there a question? Yeah, on the test, are we going to have to multiply those two? Um, I'll let you know. Okay. It may depend on what gets sent to me as to whether or not they seem to insist on that. So I need to multiply these two together. So I'm going to multiply my x times everything in here. So I'll have x squared plus 2x minus 3ix. Now I'm going to multiply my 2 by everything in here. So I will have plus 2x plus 4 minus 6i. And now my 3i is multiplying everything, so I'll have plus 3ix plus 6i minus 9i squared. Okay, x minus 1. What do I have here? I've got an x squared. Do I have any others? No. Okay, so just one x squared. I have a 2x. I see another 2x, so that's 4x. I don't see any more. I got them all. So now I have plus 4x. I see a negative 3ix. I want to make that go away. Luckily, there's a positive 3ix here, so those two cancel. They become 0. Here I have a 2x I already took care of. Here I have a 4. There's no other currently written single, digit, single numbers. Negative 6i and the positive 6i cancel, and then I have minus... 9i squared, what is i squared equal to? Negative 1. So you can actually, if you want, just write your problem. Ooh, I forgot my square. x squared plus 4x. 4 minus a negative 9, so plus 13. If you ever look at the answer, though, it will say x squared plus 4x plus 4 minus, or plus 9. It, it doesn't add them together in the answers because of the way they wrote the answers. So these I have to 
to multiply together for web work, and I'll let you know about the test when it comes. It's still a little ways away. It's like not the 6th, 7th, but whatever comes next, like the 13th, 14th, or 17th, 18th, I don't remember. It's that, that next couple weeks later. Yeah. I don't know. I don't understand how you got all these numbers. This right here? I don't know how you got that. This one? Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking about the 4 and the 6. This four? No, on the top. Up here. Oh, yeah. We got so you know where I got this one, this one, and this one? Yeah. Then I moved over from my x and moved to my two. Mm -hmm. And I multiplied my two by each thing in the second one. So that's where I got the two uh, x, the four, and the negative six i. Okay, so you just factor it out. Right. So and then I did the third one. It's kind of foiling, right. but foil doesn't work for me in cases of threes, three things in each piece. So I just start with the first one in this and multiply it times everything in the second piece. The second one and multiply it times everything in the second piece. And then the third piece and multiply it times everything. So multiply the x and the x and the x and the x. Right. Right. Alright, I got it. Yeah. Now once you start getting three or four things in there, it starts, you're like, ugh. Oh. Just the organization throws people. And it certainly does me. So how are we doing on time? We're going to skip this. There's this thing, it, your book mentioned something called the Descartes School, Descartes School of Signs. I never use this, partly because we have the calculator. And so there's no need to use it to say how many positive real zeros there might be and negative real zeros. So you can kind of ignore it. I stuck it in there just for fun. The fundamental theorem of algebra. We can't really leave this out after all. This first half of this class is essentially an algebra class. And if we leave out the fundamental theorem, haven't we missed most of algebra? It is fundamental. But basically it says a polynomial of degree n, where n is bigger than or equal to 1, then if you set it equal to 0, it has at least one complex root. Keep in mind that complex roots include things like 1. 1 is a complex number. 2 is a complex number. All numbers that we're, we deal with can be made into complex numbers by adding plus 0i if they're the nice real ones. That's all this is saying. It's kind of a weird fundamental theorem, but it's saying that you're going to have answers. And they're all going, and they're going to be enough of them. They're going to actually be, it says at least one because they could all be the same number. So, you know, like x minus 1 type thing. There's only one answer. And I think that's it for our...